Hey, welcome to the Early Career Scholars in Material Science uh, 2019 webinar. Uh, we're here to talk about the fourth annual issue of uh, th this particular issue. Uh, I'm joined by Linda Shadler uh, from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. She's one of the lead editors on the issue. Uh, I'm Gary Messing. I'm at Penn State University, and I'm also a lead editor on this particular issue. But furthermore, we're joined by Jason Trelowitz and Veronica Augustin. Uh, Jason is from Stony Brook University, and Veronica is from North Carolina State University. They are authors of uh, papers uh, in um, the Early Career Scholars issues in 2017 and 2018. Uh, the Early Career Scholars uh, issue of the General Materials Research was created uh, four years ago. This will be our fourth issue. And what it is is a, an, an issue that we try to highlight uh, young professionals in materials research. Uh, they can be in universities and they can be in industry or in the national laboratories, and they can be located anywhere in the, in the world. And our idea is basically to give them a platform on which they can then tell us a little bit about the kind of research that they that, that um, characterizes them. Uh, and what we've done so far is published a number of issues we've had three so far, and we're on the fourth one. The deadline for this particular one will be June one of two thousand eighteen. It will publish in in January of two thousand nineteen. So we'd like to put it at the beginning of the, of the annual uh, issue year, uh, so that it receives the maximum citations, uh, which is always good for the author. So uh, Linda Shadler is on. And Linda, you're uh, been involved with this from the from day one as one of the lead editors. Could you talk a little bit about some of the benefits to uh, young faculty and young professionals in materials? Sure. Thanks, Gary. Yes, um, I always send the announcement first to the assistant and associate professors in my own department because I feel there's a lot of value to putting a paper out there that really introduces your lab and what you're trying to contribute to the community in a way that doesn't prevent you publishing your research in other journals as well, because this is sort of a conglomerate of the impact that you're trying to have in the community. It's a high profile paper. It's in, in an issue where there are lots of other high profile papers. So the community is starting to come to that issue to learn about some of the new faculty in the field. It's open access, so it's available really around the world. And so that also gives you maximum exposure and we're building this reputation of putting together the top research from new investigators all in one place. So it's a chance to really raise your profile. Thanks, Linda. I know that when we started this, we, we kind of tried to anticipate what, the, what this publication of uh, early career scholars issues are going to be looking like in 20 years when we look at some of the people who published in those first ones and how they've come along in their careers. Uh, Veronica, uh, you published a, a review article in, in uh, 2017 on tuning in a layer of transition metal oxides for electrochemical energy storage. I know that even though it's only been out there for the year, it's already been cited in a number of other papers. I checked it this morning uh, on Google Scholar. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how you felt the, the process of the review process and why you're publishing in this particular issue. Sure. So um, I think for me, it was really a, a very good opportunity that came at the right time to publish this paper. I was in my first year as an assistant professor at NC State. And so I didn't have any experimental results yet that I could share in, in a, a publication um, by June 1st of that year. But what I had was um, an idea or a concept that I've been thinking about for some time, a direction that I wanted to establish for my group. And it was this concept of looking at layered materials and thinking about how to tune that interlayer space for functionality. And in my case, I'm interested in electrochemical properties. Um, and I felt like I really needed to get that out now because, like you said, this paper has already been cited a few times. And I think it's really uh, a concept that has um, captured not just my imagination, but the imagination of other groups around the world. Um, and one of the things that I liked about publishing in JMR is because Materials Research Society is my, um, is my professional society home. 
It's where I gave my first um, research presentations at a conference. Um, it's where I organized symposia um, and obtain funding from sources like the Materials Research Society Foundation. So it felt very natural to um, be part of that issue in the Materials Research Society journal. Um, and then lastly, um, like I was saying, I needed to have an opportunity to summarize a lot of thoughts on a particular topic. And what was really nice is that at the same time that I was writing this review paper, I was also writing um, the NSF career proposal, which is a big kind of milestone for all of us junior faculty. And um, I was very lucky I was awarded the career proposal with the submission that summer. And I felt like having the review paper in JMR, which gave me a lot of the background information for that proposal, um, just kind of went together. It was very synergistic in what I was trying to achieve. So for me, um, it was really a, a great opportunity that came at the right time and, and from the professional society that I really um, identify with the most. Very, very good, Veronica. I, I know that uh, there must you probably also got some invitations already to go speak. People started seeing you know, your thoughts and what's going on with the these trans layered <coughs> sides. It's uh, I can just tell that there's a, a certain uh, vibrancy about that per particular publication. Uh, Jason, I, I, I know uh, you and I met actually uh, last year. And uh, we had a discussion at a meeting. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about the origin of your paper and uh, you know what you thought about the process and the outcome of publishing in JMR? Even though, by the way, it's just now been published. I think it was published online uh, as opposed to in uh, the issue, but it was published online uh, earlier uh, when it was accepted. Jason? Yes. So. Um, initially, actually, the, the work that uh, I was looking to put into uh, JMR, and it was initially intended to go into JMR, is on uh, looking at microstructural stability of uh, nanostructure tungsten alloys. And um, a big motivation behind this work is considering these materials for future fusion energy applications. And I think I have to echo a little bit of uh, one of Veronica's statements, which is, at the time of writing this, uh, I was submitting my DOE early career proposal, and uh, the article was accepted and and published online. And uh, shortly after, um, I was also selected and awarded the DOE uh, early career uh, award. So uh, definitely, there are uh, a number of implications that that having an article focused in an early career scholar issue provides uh, junior faculty members that are that are writing these very focused grant proposals to um, for early career awards. But uh, I think that aside, my my uh, intention was to actually put this work in journal materials research because it it combines two aspects of of my field in metallurgy, which is. Uh, some some work on more classical materials, classical uh, metals, so tungsten, but it brings uh, it really brings in this idea of incorporating new types of solute stabilized nanostructures into these materials. And um, the Materials Research Society in particular and the Journal of Materials Research uh, has really done an excellent job at, at focusing on some of these aspects of nanostructuring in metals. So that was a lot of my motivation for publishing initially in JMR and then having the opportunity to put this into the early career scholars issue um, has really just been a great experience. I mean, first and foremost, you, you get to not just write about the research, but have a little bit more detail uh, right at the front about your biography and what you're looking to do in your own research. And um, I've had a number of colleagues uh, send me messages and and actually already comment on the work. And, and I'm surprised at that, especially since you're saying that it's it's really only uh, hit uh, on the internet um, in, in open access, which is excellent uh, recently. So it was it was really a great experience and I, I can't be more of an advocate for it, uh, for the publishing in the early career scholar, uh, scholar issue to uh, new junior faculty. Very, very good, Jason. I, I should add that, that Jason's uh, paper was an invited feature paper. Uh, Jason and I uh, happened to meet at one of the annual meetings and we started talking. Uh, it, I'm not sure that it was actually at that time the same topic that we, we were talking about at that time, but 
uh, we ended up with the topic that you wrote on, and it's fantastic. Uh, the, the, the common denominator for both of these papers, and actually a lot of the papers, we do publish a lot of papers in the area of nanoscale uh, materials uh, about what's happening at the nano dimension and how that's uh, being facilitated through process and how that's affecting properties. Uh, and so these papers are actually cutting edge and uh, we're very excited to have them in uh, this particular issue. Uh, I should say uh, um, both Jason and Veronica are, are, are faculty members at universities. Uh, it is not restricted to faculty members. Uh, we would entertain, we would entertain the um, young faculty from have motion sensitive light here. Um, we entertain also young uh, uh, researchers at the national labs and in industry. Uh, it just seems to be a lot more young researchers uh, that publish in JMR that are coming from universities. But certainly people from the national labs are very much welcome uh, to join us as well. Uh, Linda, do you have any other uh, comments you'd like to make about uh, what you've heard so far today? No, I think it captures it well. It's, it's a great opportunity, and I strongly encourage uh, young researchers to participate. And as a former department head, uh, I served as the department head here at Penn State University for a number of years. Uh, I would say that these kind of uh, uh, high-ranking kinds of publications are, are looked upon very favorably uh, for young faculty uh, as they go through the process of building their career and being evaluated and like that for tenure. So um, I think it's a win-win all around. And, um, and we really appreciate the fact that you guys uh, participated in these uh, early issues of uh, the early career scholars uh, issue. So thank you very much for joining us, uh, Veronica and Jason and Linda. Uh, good to see you as well. And uh, thanks again, everybody. Thank you, Gary. Thank you.